hello everyone. Um, this is Nigel Hayward speaking and welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much for logging in. I do hope you find the next 60 minutes of, of interest to you. Um, if there are any technical problems with GoToMeeting transmission, please could you put them into the chat facility and Andy, my colleague here, will, will try to deal with them. Uh, if there are any uh, technical questions on the presentation itself, um, you can either put them into chat and we'll pick them up. I'll pick them up at the end of the presentation. Um, or to be individual questions together, I'll go through them at the end. So this is about pumping and pipeline design. Uh, by pipeline design, we also include validation of other people's designs and also troubleshooting. So I've been in this area for uh, many years and uh, focused very much on different types of slurries and pace in different industry sectors o over the years. So in terms of the presentation and aims and the outline, an introduction to slurry handling in general but with a definite emphasis on slurry transport by pumping through pipelines. So looking at the process hydraulics of slurry flows in pipe work, uh, but also looking at the end, uh, some a few slides about designing tanks for agitating uh, slurries, feeding uh, pipelines or intermediate storage or, or final reception of, of a slurry that's been transferred uh, through pipe work. And this pipe work might be a few tens of meters or less within plants, chemical plants, farmer, minerals processing circuits. Um, but also it, it could uh, focus on long distance hydraulic conveying of sl solids or slurries uh, in um, pipelines over uh, hundreds of kilometers. There are two main basic types of slurries, non-settling slurries and settling slurries. An example of a non-settling slurry is very fine clay in water. Um, it just doesn't settle out very appreciably at all under gravity uh, compared with, say, the time it takes to get through a pipe from A to B, whereas settling slurries such as uh, one or two millimeters of sand in water, well, that if you shake it up in a beaker and allow that to uh, drop out under gravity, then you can see immediately that is definitely a settling slurry. And I'm going to be dealing uh, with both of those. They require quite different technological approaches for pipeline design and therefore pump specification and, and sizing. So first of all, the different types of slurries in terms of the different terminology that's used uh, in different uh, process industry sectors. One of the main aspects, obviously, to designing pipe work is the rheological properties, the flow properties of your material and uh, how one approaches those, how one uh, measures those rheological properties. And then separately, I'm going to talk about frictional pressure loss estimation for these non-settling, often very fine slurries, uh, which can be referred to often as pseudo-homogeneous slurries. And the comments that I make here refer equally well to pure liquids, uh, fully immiscible liquid mixtures, immiscible liquid, liquid emulsions, polymer solutions, anything that's pseudo-homogeneous where you can measure the flow curve or the viscosity. But unlike um, settling slurries where uh, because they settle out so fast in relation to the time required to transport through the pipe work, uh, you just cannot measure sensibly the viscosity of settling slurries, even though a lot of people come to me and ask me, how do you measure the viscosity of settling slurries? It's really not advisable. Equipment options I talk about, apart from pipe work, centrifugal and positive displacement slurry pumps, and I mentioned already something about slurry tank design. And then finally, I'll finish off with three slides on a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure uh, for anyone uh, at the beginning to design uh, a slurry pipeline system, uh, whether it be, as I say, short runs or quite long runs of uh, tens of kilometers or more. 
What do I mean by slurry? Well, I use the term slurry in a very general way, and it's any particle solid liquid mixture. So a two-phase mixture. Uh, the liquid is often water, but it needn't necessarily be. It could be any organic solvent. And the particles could be of any size and indeed any shape. So we're talking about particles that are submicron right through to 20, even 50 millimeter coal lumps or limestone lumps or, or what have you. And the material is essentially an incompressible mixture, but sometimes you'll get gas bubbles in there, maybe air bubbles or other gas, and that might interfere with uh, rheological measurements. Um, but if the proportion of gas is small, then it's something that often one doesn't have to worry too much about. What we have here are about uh, 10 or a dozen different terms that often tend to be used in different industry sectors. So in the mining and minerals industry, uh, there's pulps and slimes and tailings, uh, ceramics is slips, sludges is a pretty general word used to refer to waste material, which is a solid liquid mixture. And then you've got generic terms again, like suspensions and pastes, so, um, and dispersions. So a number of different terms are used uh, for basically the same thing, and in my book that that's, uh, term is, is, a, is a slurry. So I mentioned there's quite a distinction between non-settling and settling slurries. One way to try to compare them is to look at the gravity particle settling and compare that with the resonance time in the pipe of interest to you. So if you know the pipe length and you know the likely velocity through that pipe work, well then you can work out the average resonance time. And if that's um, pretty uh, uh, small uh, compared with uh, the setting rate that you can measure using a graduated cylinder in the lab, maybe a one liter or two liter graduated cylinder, then that tells you whether it's a non-settling or, or a settling slurry. And it's important, as I mentioned earlier, that you want to try to make the distinction between your two different types of slurry early on, because when you want to estimate friction on the suction and discharge side of pumps, um, you can do that through viscosity measurements or more generally flow curves, which are plots of shear stress against shear rate. You can do that for non-settling pseudo-homogeneous slurries, but you can't for settling slurries. They have to be treated as two-phase materials, as I'll, I'll explain later. Of course, sometimes it's not as simple as that, because you can get very fine particles right through to very coarse particles all in the same slurry. So what, what do you do in that situation? Well, a lot of people tend to divide the solids up into fines, which they refer to as sub-75 or 45 micron, a convenient sieve size material. And it's the coarser particles, the plus 45 or plus 75 micron material, uh, in which uh, the, the coarse particles uh, are embedded in your fine particle liquid mixture. And so you measure the rheological properties of your fine particle suspending phase, and rather than using the viscosity of water or the viscosity of the organic solvent, for instance, you use the viscosity or more generally the maybe non-Newtonian rheological property of this fine particle liquid suspending phase.